What's going on guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. I'm excited. Here we go. We got a CP passage. Okay, it is a looks like a uh, chemistry looks like a chemistry passage. So this is going to be fun. All right. I'm going to show you guys how to break this down. I'm going to show you guys how to get all the questions right. Yes, I said that. I'm going to show you guys how to get them right. Okay, the MCAT is not hard. Whoever said the MCAT is hard is lying to you. They're lying to your face. Okay, it's not hard. It's easy when you do the right things. Okay, so before I break this down, guys, as always, read the passage on your own first. All right, answer the questions on your own first. So this is the first question, question 14. This is 15. This is 16. And this is 17. Cool, cool, cool. Let us begin. Hopefully, you guys got everything right. And if you didn't, I'll show you guys, you know, you should... I'll show you guys how to get everything right, but also compare, like compare what I was thinking when I was doing the question and compare what you were thinking when you were doing the question. See where you went wrong. See where you went right. Take a lot of information down. These breakdowns are very, very useful. Okay. I've seen people and I've gotten plenty of emails. Look at the comment section too. Okay. This helps a lot of people. I get plenty of emails, people saying, Eric, my score increased, you know, five to six points just by doing what you said to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's very common. All right. So. Let's do this. Passage three. Bile is a greenish fluid produced in the liver that helps dispose of the liver's waste products and aids in the digestion of fats. I'm going to highlight this because this is popping out at me. All right. Bile helps the digestion of fats and it also helps dispose of the liver's waste products. Okay. I didn't know that it disposes of the liver's waste products. I did know it digests fats or helps in digestion of fats. So I'm going to highlight this because I want to make a mental note in my head so I can remind myself, hey, bile, it also helps dispose the liver's waste, okay, in case the question asks for it. That's the point of highlighting, guys, is to highlight the important facts so your brain can remember it when it comes to question time. All right, also to look at it quickly in case the question asks about a certain uh, sentence. All right, so. It is stored in the gallbladder and emptied into the small intestine via the common bile duct when needed. I know that. I knew that from my content review. I don't need to highlight that. The principal components of bile are bile acids, cholesterol, and bilirubin. All right, what are they? Bile acids, cholesterol, and bilirubin. The liver enzymatically converts cholesterol into one of two primary bile acids, cholic acid or Kinodeoxycholic acid. All right, this is the figure. We don't look at the figure. We only look at the figure when the question asks for it. These acids are then coupled with glycine, an amino acid, or taurine, one of the few known naturally occurring sulfonic acids. That is what taurine is. I don't know what taurine is. All right, so I'm going to highlight this where it tells me exactly what taurine is. Okay, I want to make a mental note in my head. I want to know everything when I answer these questions. Taurocholic acid is readily converted into its salt in the duodenum upon mixing with pancreatic secretions containing lipase and bicarbonate. Okay, this sentence here should make sense in your head. All right, we have an acid and it's converted into its salt. Okay, what is the salt of an acid? Well, it's pretty simple. Okay, let's say you have carboxylic acid here. The salt of a carboxylic acid is just this deprotonated and it's just an O minus. Okay. If you have benzoic acid, sodium benzoic acid, you know, you'll see those ions come out. So that's what a salt is. Okay. And it becomes its salt, it becomes deprotonated upon mixing with pancreatic secretions containing lipase and bicarbonate. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Bicarbonate is rather basic. Of course, it's going to go ahead and deprotonate the tarocholic acid and make it into its salt. Okay. Bile acids are amphipathic. It is this property that allows them to emulsify fat globules into microscopic micelles, increasing fat surface area and aiding digestion by lipase. If you didn't know this before, I'd recommend highlighting some things, but I knew this already, so I'm not going to highlight anything here. Bacteria in the colon convert compounds 2 and 3 into their respective secondary bile acids 5 and 6 shown below. Okay, bacteria, where in the colon? All right, they convert them to their secondary bile acids. All right, bile salts are not passively absorbed in the small intestine. All right, so they're not passively absorbed in the small intestine. 
but secondary bile acids are actively absorbed in the colon where the pH is less basic, okay? So the reason why we go to the colon to reabsorb the bile acids, I mean bile, yeah, the bile acids is because it's less basic, all right? Up to 95% of the bile acids produced by liver are reabsorbed and can be used in the digestive process up to 20 times. Wow, 20 times, that's amazing. Okay, let me give us another figure here. Cool, 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 easy passage, guys. This is why I tell you that the MCAT is easy, okay? When you do the right things, when you highlight the right places, it all starts to make sense. When you put your focus on what needs to be focused on, when you do the right things, it all makes sense and it becomes a lot easier, okay? Which of the following transformations do liver enzymes employ to produce all primary bile acids? Okay, here's cholesterol, and here's a bile acid. All right, the liver converts cholesterol into one of the two primary bile acids, okay? So how does it do this? How does it do this? Well, let's see what changed. Simple, all right? I see an addition of a carboxylic acid group. Cool. I also see addition of an R group, and this R group can be OH or H, all right? So... I see this carboxylic acid group. How do I get that? I'm going to have to oxidize a carbon. Okay. Nucleophilic addition. What group would I need to put in here to use a nucleophile for? There's no like functional group or anything like that that would require a nucleophile. None. Okay. Saponification. No. Why would we need saponification here? Okay, you should know what saponification is. You should know what it is. All right, think about it. Soap, salt. You're making the salt. Okay, when we go ahead and break, you know, the triglycerides into its free fatty acids, that's a saponification reaction. Right? We're using sodium hydroxide or uh, lye. It's called to do that. And this is not. We have no breaking here. It's just a simple carboxylic acid group added. So this is wrong, and then this is wrong as well. Okay. Oxidation. Yes, of course. Okay, we oxidize this carbon, we get the carboxylic acid group. If we oxidize whatever is over here, okay, over here, my bad, we get the OH. Okay, so we're oxidizing, we're oxidizing everything here. Dehydration, no. We're not dehydrating anything. Okay, there's no water involved. So the answer is C. It's that easy. Bam, 14 to C. Which of the following contributes to the fact that the small intestine cannot passively absorb bile salts? Okay, well, they told us in the passage that bile salts are not passively absorbed in the small intestine. But secondary bile acids are actively absorbed in the colon, where the pH is less basic. So, they are absorbed when the pH is less basic. Okay, so that means they are absorbed when it is more basic, okay? So let's see. Taurine and glycine have low pKa values. Hmm, okay. I would say so because they are, this is an amino acid and taurine is one of the sulfonic acids and sulfonic acids, they're pretty acidic. They're very, very acidic, okay? It's very similar to like sulfuric acids, very acidic stuff. So it makes sense that they would have low pKa values, but I'm not entirely sure, but I can assume that these would have low pKa values, but let's keep going. Bile salts are hydrophobic. This is wrong, completely wrong, okay? We know what a salt is. Salts are charged, okay? They have a charge on them. If they have a charge on them, they're gonna be water soluble they're not going to be hydrophobic okay pancreatic secretions increase intestinal ph this is correct okay this is correct all right the reason why we could not absorb in the small intestine is because it was too basic so it was reabsorbed the secondary bile acids in the colon where it's less basic okay the reason why the small intestine was so basic is because of the bicarbonate that was secreted by the pancreas, okay? So three is definitely right. One, um, 
good, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's see if these answer choices, okay? One, I, I know three is right no matter what. So B is wrong. Okay, I need three to be in there. All right, and then we have one and three or two and three. Well, I know two is wrong, so it's not going to be D. It leaves me with C, one and three, okay? Did I feel amazing about one? I didn't feel amazing, but I felt good. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Don't expect to feel amazing for every single answer choice. All right. This is the MCAT. They know what they're doing. They know what questions are hard for students and they know what questions are easy for students. Have confidence in yourself and your answering abilities. All right. 15 is C here. Let's keep going. Lipase works to hydrolyze which of the following functional groups? Easy. Ester. Okay. Ester. Okay. Fatty acids. The fatty acids are put into a triglyceride. They're form they form the triglyceride through ester bonds. That's how it's done. If you do not know this one, I highly recommend you go and review. Okay, this is something that's basic and you should be getting. Okay. Taurine is a derivative of the amino acid cysteine shown below. Which of the following reactions is a necessary part of the biochemical conversion of cysteine to taurine in the body? Well, this is cysteine. Taurine is, yeah, this one. This is tarocholic acid. So this is the taurine here. This is cysteine here. What's different between this and this? Okay, let's see. Decarboxylic, decarboxylation of the carboxyl group. Um, perhaps, yeah. We had a carboxyl group here. All right. Mm, yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but looks like it. Protonation of the basic amine. No, to go from here to here, we deprotonate. We don't protonate it. Okay. Reduction of the thiol group. This is not. This can't get reduced any further. To go from here to here, we're gonna need to oxidize that. So C is wrong. Conversion of the primary amine to an imine. This is wrong. This is a primary amine, correct? But this is an amide bond. This is an amide bond. You've seen these in proteins, okay? It's an amide bond. So D is wrong. And process elimination, we're going to go with A. Okay, this is wrong. Oh, never mind. I guess I can't cross that out. But process elimination, we're going to go with A here. It's that simple, guys. Is that it? And that is it, guys. If it's your... If you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me inside MCAT University, okay, it's the fully loaded program. I will make sure that you hit your target score in the least amount of time possible. Whatever time it is, I can cut it in half, number one. Number two, okay, all you have to do is just follow exactly what's proven in MCAT University, okay? MCAT University has everything that's proven to hit your target score, everything. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if this is all correct as well right now. So let's see, 14. Don't mind the 118, okay? I just put... Uh, to finish the test without looking at what's correct and what's incorrect. I left them all blank. So what we got here, we got 14 to 17. Okay, 14. C, 15. C, 16. B, 17. A, okay, so we got them all right. So if you're interested in working one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead, guys, go to the comment section of this video, click on the link. I'll let you interview for MCAT University. If it seems like you're a good fit, you can join MCAT University, okay? I told you in MCAT University, it's a fully loaded program, okay? I will make sure you hit your target score in half the time that's predicted, okay? Not only that, but everything is proven in there. Many, many students have hit their target score, and you can see from the breakdown videos just how effective my methods are, okay? People are getting their scores up using this, so I highly recommend for you guys to join MCAT University. It's very easy. All you gotta do is just Push button results. That's how it is. Okay, just do was just follow the proven path. That's it. Okay. And yeah, I'm running a sale on it too. So guys, I highly recommend you go and you click on it now before spots fill up and I'm no longer tutoring in there. So if you want to work when I want to meet, now is the time to do it. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.